Ash, and this is my wife, and these are my kids. And we're on a little road trip, and I'm coming to you today, and I'm gonna do a, something slightly different than my normal videos. We're gonna talk about 10 things that we do not like about our 2017 Pacifica? Chrysler Pacifica. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got my wife into this whole thing. So, me and my wife, YouTube, YouTube, my wife. All right, most of you guys know me already, hopefully. If you haven't, please check out some of my past videos. I do a lot of barbecue stuff, but this is, again, something different today. So, in uh, keeping with the title, just wanted to give you a little bit of um, why or how we're qualified to talk about this. Um, we've owned this minivan, we purchased this minivan January 3rd, 2017. It is now... September 16th, 2017. So we've had it for nine, uh, nine months and we put 18,000, actually almost 19,000. By the time this trip is done, we'll have 19,000 miles on the, on the van. We're at 18,931 now and we're taking a little road trip. So while we're taking the trip, figured we would talk about some of the things that we didn't like about the van since or in the nine months that we've owned it. And I'm and sorry. What? Are we going with number one? Yes. Okay. Number one. So, the first thing I wrote down was um, the navigation. Uh -huh. My problem with the navigation is it seems outdated. The colors, there's not enough contrast in the colors yeah. when I'm driving to be able to know the route. So, when we're driving and I set the navigation, and it wants to reroute me due to a traffic incident or anything like that. I have no idea what route it's on because there's no numbers. It's not telling me go up 29 or it's just a different color and more lines. And I have no idea if I want to accept that route or not. So okay. there's, it's out of date. So there's no options. Like you can't choose which way you want to go. Like so if it's, if it's trying to send you. Now mind you. We live um, in Baltimore, so the majority of the major routes in our area are that run north and south of 95, 29, Route 1, 97, I-97. So if it was one of those routes, you can't pick it. Like if you know that 29 is going to have traffic versus 95 or vice versa, you can't pick 95 over 29. It's not really that. The oh. problem is where I'll set it and it's going to route me up 95 okay. and I'm happy with that. But in doing it, will say an incident has happened on 95, we would like to reroute you, it shows me the map, but I have no idea where what no. that route okay. is that is telling me. Because there's not enough... Like it won't I guess, zoom out enough to be able to see the entire route? Yeah, and I can't see, it doesn't have a number on there saying, okay, now instead of 95, we're routing you on 29, okay. or anything like that. So I'm going blind. And I can't, it just doesn't work. So I typically stick with my Google. All right. Number two. Number two. We find the 3G Wi-Fi to be insufficient. Okay. So this is uh, one. Having a family with um, three children and having tablets and... Well, basically, it was just the tablets at that point. Um, mm -hmm. We turned the 3G service on. We turned it on for a day, one time, and we traveled with it. And uh, it didn't it didn't hold very good signal. And it, it 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 said that it could do up to I don't know five devices, ten devices. But we had three devices connected to it max. And of the three, everything was all bogged down. It it just it just showed the three G speed, and it it was it was lacking to say the least. Um, again, we live in Baltimore, so we're not in a in a rural area. We're in a major metropolitan area. We took a trip from Baltimore to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and going up 83, um, it was it was non-existent. Like it, it it dropped down to the 1G speed or 1X the majority of the trip, and it it was wasted. You know, it was useless. And I think we actually tried it twice, and we found that experience Welcome to both Delaware. times. Huh. All right. The other. My other problem. Number three. I'm gonna go with number three. Uh, the UConnect apps doesn't work reliably. So my experience is mainly with Pandora. When I try to have Pandora run, it usually says I need to reset it up, and or it just doesn't load, and I can't set it up while driving. And I don't know that it's not working until so I'm driving. It, yeah. So it's it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. All right. 
my number four there's no okay with us having a family three kids sometimes both children will sit in the back or they'll have friends there's no cup holders on the left side in the rear in the third row seat so the the driver's side and that's because we we actually and i didn't say this earlier but we have this this is the limited I don't know. Or it's the one with all the bells and whistles. So, yes. So we have the included um, vacuum. And because we have that included vacuum, we're missing a cup holder on that driver's side rear. So The only thing we don't have on this car is a tow hitch. But everything else we have... <laughs> and mufflaps. Oh, uh, yeah. But we have the larger screen. We have the upgraded Better, sound it, yep. system. We have the panoramic ceiling. So we went all out and got everything so go bigger not, not pretty much oh the whole what is the outside view thing so this is the the tech package yeah. uh with the adaptive cruise control which i'm using currently now mm -hmm. What's which will take us to another issue his cruise control issue okay so and let's see if i can get this to work and i think i'm gonna be able to try and the problem is um, we're, we're driving right now at, um, we're going at 77 miles an hour, eight, almost 80. And so we're going too slow. Actually, I could have got behind that car right there. But the problem I have, whee, the problem I have, okay, so the, the problem with the cruise control, state trooper there, I can't really show the problem with the cruise control and go faster because, you know, we need to slow down. All right, but the major problem with the cruise control that I have is that if you get stuck behind a slower vehicle, whoa, Jesus. yeah, and this is actually kind of perfect. If you get stuck behind a slower vehicle and then that vehicle moves or you move out of the way, it is doing it right now. Hopefully you can hear that. If you can't, there it is. The whole thing is, the vehicle wants to get back up to your your set cruise control speed so fast. I don't think that it's necessary for it to drop down. Now, mind you, this thing has eight gears. Um, I don't think it's necessary for you to drop down two gears, basically, to get back up to your cruising speed. One gear should be sufficient, and then maybe have like a, a 50%, you know, or or you know, some sort of gradient to get you back up to your your cruising speed. Because it's just it's just nuts how it goes from 50 to want to hurry up and get back up to 80 as fast as possible. So that's my number. What, what number are we? I don't know. Um, I lost it. Um, I know. Here I'm it sorry. is again. Let's see. Anyway, so our next problem, or not problem, our next <coughs> critique. Is that a good issue. word? Issue. Issue. Okay. Um, the middle row, which are our two. Good Jesus, which is our two captain's chairs, they the seats itself can't move forward and back, so I can't give any additional room to the third row seat. When so, say my daughter's in a car seat, and she's in one of the captain chairs in the middle row. I would love to move her seat up and leave more room behind her for one of her bigger brothers who sits back there. But I have, I don't have that option. I did have that option in my Dodge. So coming or before this vehicle and uh we had a 2005 dodge grand caravan with over 200,000 miles and you know it was running fine it was just starting to show its age and its high miles so before it blew up or you know left my wife stranded um we made the choice and we started looking for this for a new vehicle uh, a good year it was a good year we were searching before we finally decided on the um the 2017 Pacifica but we've had previous minivans with that that seat that moves forward as well as the stow and go and other things like that so it's one of the things that we miss yes definitely one of the things I miss so one of the things that would be on my wish list is I wish I could download files and apps to the car um, because with the navigation being outdated I wish I could look at the maybe the Google Maps navigation or if I could put other apps on it for the entertainment centers in the back, other games like and things like that, because right now be I think there's what, four three. or five games. Is there three? Like the license plate game, the Sudoku. Bingo. There's, oh, there's bingo. There's a bingo. And the hangman. 
So, yeah. So, whatever number of games that are back there. When you have three kids that are used to changing and playing all different things, it gets old quick. So, I really wish I was able to download some. Even if, what's this, Chrysler had their own app place where you could download things for a dollar or something like that. I would be completely fine with that if I could put more games on the actual... Or entertainment. Not necessarily games, but... Yeah, entertainment. Like, if I could download movies straight to it or anything, I just wish I can expand that's, what's available. Yeah. That's another thing that I don't think we have on the list. Um, we I don't think we talked oh, we about can, it. Yeah, we can talk about that. So, one of the reasons why we we went with this van was the uh with the additional we got the theater package is because we saw the ability to be able to um to download movies we thought we were downloading movies to the actual like a hard drive on the van but we we later found out that you actually have to use a usb drive and the movies are on the usb drive the problem is the specific format necessary to play movies on the usb drive is very complicated and convoluted um, if we were able to spend, you know, five bucks, ten bucks, and get a movie that we could put directly onto the van so that the kids can easily play them, that would be great. It took us nine months to figure out what format, not only the format, the size, and then the last piece was the specific type of USB drive in order to get it so that we could get the movies to work on the, uh, on you know, so the kids could play the movies from their screens in the, in the middle row. So, yeah, it took us a bit of research and we looked through a couple of Web forums, forums and things like that and everybody had a different opinion. So even <clears throat> from message to message, they weren't consistent on how big the file size. And it was just a lack of information provided yeah, by Chrysler. Chrysler. Um, so we had a larger SanDisk um, thumb drive that we started putting movies on and the first drive, the first input USB we put in and it recognized it. So we thought, great, the car recognized it, everything's working well, but it will only play my music that was on there. When I would move it to the rear auxiliary USB that's up here in the front, it no longer, it wouldn't see it at all. So we couldn't figure out what was the problem. We thought it wasn't seeing it because it wasn't seeing the movies that was on there. But it really wasn't seeing it, and after we did a little bit of experimenting, we found out that it was a difference between the three USB, USB 3 and then USB 3.0. Yes, so the one that we have in here was a USB 3.0, and it was not recognized. It didn't recognize the movies on there at all. So we bought a new one. We bought a USB 2.0. And that one, it was able to see the movies once my husband formatted them and put them on. I think that part wasn't too bad. Once you got them on, I was able to see it. Once right. you figured out the file type. Now, we just realized, or I found out, that I can put it up here in the rear, up here in the front where, you know, the, the drivers. Here. Yeah. I could put that 2.01 with the movies up here in the front, but I can't put it back there with the kids behind the seat. When I put it back there, it doesn't read it again. So I'm assuming the seat USBs are just for charging, opposed to having a movie play. So our next issue was with the windshield. I've had the car for eight months, nine months, nine months and I've already had two dings in the windshield. I had my Dodge for over 10 years. I might have had one ding and just normal road I'm not driving anywhere with additional construction I'm not riding behind trucks just my normal commute that I took with the Dodge and already I've had to have the windshield repaired twice, twice. Well, yeah no I did it once and the, other one, one, the other one the other one is it, it's behind the rain sensing uh, whatever that unit is so I haven't messed with that one just because I don't want to block anything with that mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what's going on with the windshield or why it's so easily damaged like is it is it cheaper and thinner or are there less coatings or are there more coatings is it you know it, there's something that's different between what it was before and what it is now if my dad was a champion um, my main complaint right now because I'm experiencing this more and more and I think this is my last true complaint other things are things that we figured out how to work around is the car is glitchy 
extremely glitch, glitchy. Glitchy, right? I said it right. So, when it comes down to this whole media center that's up here in the front, every so often it will lock me completely out and go to the climate tab and then it'll beep like I'm pushing buttons and I'm not pushing buttons and it'll sound like someone is just pushing, 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 pushing and it'll go faster, 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 faster until it unlocks itself. But it'll do that for a good five, ten minutes before it will let me get back in. So what I've done to work around is I navigate through the steering wheel buttons when I want to switch from stereo to my audio book or what have you. But the screen is completely locked out when it does that. And it has done that to me maybe a good 10 times since I have the car. The, so this, uh, is, this is my wife's um, daily commuter. So she drives this van way more than I do. So I've never, I don't know if you saw the surprise on my face, but I've never experienced it because it's just not, I don't drive it enough for that to have happened. One of the things though that I, I am having a problem with is the window on this driver's side. I like fresh air when I drive, so I put the window down and then when I try to put the window back up, a lot of times it it seems like there's something stuck. Excuse me, it seems like there's something stuck in the track where the window won't go up and I'll have to, you know, put it back down and then hold the up button in order for it to, to to go up all the way but that's the the one thing that I've, I've experienced a lot of or a few times now with me it actually i'll say go up it'll go up maybe a quarter of the way and go right back down yep. so it's not even i have to hold the button to make it go up instead of the one touch button the way it should be so that is also a problem another problem is that sometimes i'll get in the car again talking about glitches in the system i'll get in the car and i have no volume on anything and again I won't realize it until I'm on the road because I'll get in my car I park my car in a garage so I'm not getting a signal or anything so me not hearing anything immediately doesn't concern me so it's when I get out of my garage and I'm driving at work at work yeah because it's an underground garage when I get out of that garage and I'm driving about a block or so I'm like where's my sounds where's all the things that's supposed to happen and it'll be nothing. I have to literally cut the car off, wait till I get to a stoplight, cut the car off, wait, cut the car back on, and then I'll get volume. So that's another glitch that I've experienced with the car. And that's my main problem right now because it's annoying. I think, okay, so, so I think that's are, all Those are problems. the things that we don't like. And then the, these are things that we didn't like, but we have since figured out a way to work around them. So the first thing we figured out how to work around was the voice commands. We started to use the voice commands for, you know, message this person, call that person, and it would go through this long spiel. If you want to send this message, please do this. If you want to delete this message, please do this. Send is the very last option. So if you want to hear your message again, please say this. And it will go through this whole spiel each time. We originally wished we could shorten that or interrupt it and just say send. In the beginning, we didn't know the option, so we had to listen. But now I know I can just say send. Um, you press the button and then press and then say send, and it'll send the message as opposed to having to listen to you know all of the other options again. The repeat the message. You know, are you okay with the message? Down on I ninety five north in five miles. Sorry, you thank are still thank on the fastest route. Thank you, Lola. Mm -hmm. All right, so. But that was that was the you know one of the things that we've since overcome just kind of out of dumb luck and pressing the button a bunch of times and we just figured it out like oh wait hey that stops it yeah so if you push the voice recognition button on the steering wheel it will interrupt her message and you can just say whatever command you want to happen the other thing that we wish oh, oh the other thing that we've learned to work around was the lack of entertainment for the third row seats. So originally when the car was new and shiny and my kids were super excited, everybody wanted to sit in these two captain's chairs in so they, in the middle row um, to play on the entertainment system. The screen, so okay. So that's what everybody wanted to do. Well, I have three kids and only two entertainment systems and by default, my daughter's in a car seat so she gets one. So now I have two boys arguing over one entertainment system. Um, so that was an interesting issue and we had to say okay you get it there and you get it back and we had to kind of delegate and work that out since then 
they now know that somebody needs to bring a tablet or their phone or something and they can sit in the back calm, calmly and play. But that was one thing where I'm like, ah, because it just caused, it yeah, it just caused argument. undue stress in my house. Um, but yeah, we worked around it. I think that is it, honey. I but don't think there's anything else. Overall, we, we thoroughly enjoyed the van. Oh, we're gonna talk about the good points? Yeah, we can talk about that quickly. Okay, so. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching so far on us. You know, this is our first video collaboration. If you wanna see something else like this, you know, let me know in the comments below. And then I'll get my wife all dialed up again, and then we can, you know, we can do another video like this. But while we have your attention, or maybe this could be a separate video. It can be. You I can cut know. it off at this point. Say see, so now see you have two. to see part two. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs>